Funny thing happened on the way out to my garage this morning. Happens all the time, really. And by funny, I mean not funny. To keep these videos to a reasonable length, I tend to cut out sections that, despite complementing the content, I mean, at least I think they do anyway, otherwise I wouldn't have filmed them in the first place. I tend to cut out sections whose absence might not necessarily take away from the story. Invariably, I'll get a flood of questions about a particular aspect of a project that would have been addressed in the pieces that I cut. That just happened in the two-piece vice build video. Instead of getting into what I'd planned on for today, optoacoustic levitation in the home shop, please enjoy this never-before-seen footage about a guy who only bought a grinder yesterday talking to you about grinding. Okay, no, so this isn't the mill. I just thought while the screws dry on the vise, we could take a moment to answer a very popular question that comes up every time grinding is mentioned on this channel. It goes a little something like this. What they're asking in not so many words is, if the wheel wears down as it's doing its thing, how on earth does a surface grinder get such flat parts? And by extension, why isn't the part slightly tapered back to front? The premise being that the wheel wears by the time it makes it across the surface. Those are great questions, natural questions. I assume come from years of people grinding grooves into the face of the wheels on their bench grinders. But what might really blow your minds is that surface grinder wheels are actually softer than bench grinder wheels. I mean, they don't have to be. Depends on what you're grinding. But generally, for hardened steel, which is the brazen detra for surface grinders, the wheels will generally be softer. Though, frankly, even hard and soft aren't that black and white when it comes to grinding wheels. These things can get complicated. Just do a quick Google search and see how many are available. Combinations of grits, what the grit actually is made of, what the matrix is, how hard that matrix is, how friable it is, what color and flavor it might be. Honestly, it's worse than making heads or tails of insert tooling. Let's have a close look at this wheel. In particular, the cutting face. You see all that chromatic aberration? See how it's all dirty and loaded up with metal? That right there is the raisin we got burn marks on the part. Let me dress it, and I'd like you to keep a close eye on the fresh cutting face as it develops. I'm using a little diamond nib to break down the glazed surface to reveal new sharp particles in the wheel. See how it's cleaning the back part first, and the new face is developing back to front? Well, your intuition is correct. The wheel does break down, of course, eventually picking up a small taper front to back. But maybe not as you'd expect. Okay, one minute. Before I put this away, a little safety detail I want to point out. And I do realize at this point we're three tangents deep in this video. But I know I'd kick myself if I didn't bring this up. This might be the third or fourth time I say this on this channel. When I'm dressing the wheel, or when I'm first coming on to a new part that I'm grinding, I always come in from the trailing edge. This grinder spins this way. That might be the opposite from what you're used to seeing. This is an old English grinder with a steering wheel on the wrong side and a wheel that spins the wrong direction. No offense intended to our English friends out there. Now the grinder itself doesn't really care, but the reason for working on the trailing edge is safety. If I were work on the leading edge, on the left side in this case, again, it might be the right side on your grinder. If I made some bonehead move, with the table while working on the leading edge, it could suck the part or the diamond nib under the wheel. That potentially could be catastrophic. If instead I work on the trailing edge, now if I make a bonehead move, I mean, it's still dangerous, the wheel could shatter, but the tendency of the grinder would be to kick the part off of the mag chuck and not suck anything underneath it. With that said, let's grind a quick little part and cut to the chase. Okay, I think we got a respectable finish there, you know, for rushing through it. No burn marks at least. But have a look at the wheel. The wear mark, for lack of a better description, is quite small on the leading edge and isn't the whole face. Or edge, I guess, depending on your perspective when a grinding wheel is used this way. Words are hard. The leading edge is what does 99% of the cutting, or the grinding. The rest of the wheel still looks as fresh as when we faced it. Now, granted this was a small part, but wear on the wheel progresses front to back, since we're pushing the part in that way. The rest of the wheel is still there doing final sizing, I suppose. Although the wheel does break down, it doesn't happen as fast as you might expect. I mean, keep in mind we're only grinding down, I don't know, a few thousandths at a time, maybe five or six thousandths tops. 
for this size grinder with no cooling. On finished passes, that might only be two or three tenths of a thousandth. If you're doing big parts or lots of parts, you do need to dress the wheel every now and again, of course. And dressing the wheel does make it smaller. Not a lot, but remember we're talking tenths on this machine. So picking back up where you left off can be tricky and is part of the black magic that is precision grinding. And while we're here, maybe one last thing. Although it appears it's cutting on its leading edge, sort of into the wheel, you can't really do any heavy side wheeling. That could be dangerous. I mean, I do it all the time. You can probably see the build up in the side of my wheel, but it's only for very light dusting of, you know, small vertical surfaces. There are different wheel styles that can take those loads better than this one. Anyway, the screws on the vise should be dry by now. Well, given the non-linearity of time out here in my garage and in my video editing software, not sure if that clip raised more questions than it answered, but hopefully you found something in there you liked. As always, smell you later.